Hey everyone, Al DeMarco here, General Manager at DeMarcoSports.com, and this is going to be your Sunday video report. Well, couldn't have asked for anything better on Saturday than a 3-0 sweep. My best bet yesterday over at DeMarcoSports.com happened to be a raise the bar 20-dime winner, number four in a row in the dance with Connecticut getting the job done. Here on the video report, we close the chapter in college basketball with a winner on Purdue, 31-16-1, with my final 48 college basketball freebies, 31-16-1. And, and the first baseball freebie of the season, the St. Louis Cardinals on the run line, plus $1.35, 3 to one over the Marlins. Now, today's best bet, as far as I'm concerned, it's not in the NBA. It's once again in baseball, where I've got top-rated 15-dime baseball winner number five out of six to start the season. It's a four-run mismatch on the daytime card, and once again, it's available for half price using coupon code, yes, the word half, H-A-L-F. As I continue to tell you, the first three weeks, the easiest time to make money in baseball, and again, it is the easiest sport to make money in, hands down. It always has been. It's the reason why I'm the winningest handicapper here in baseball uh, since I created this site, turning a profit 17 of the 22 years. And truth be told, I've been winning in baseball long before I made uh, this website all those years ago. Uh, listen, baseball is a sport that a lot of you don't like to play because it's a long season. Listen, it is truly the dog days of summer. But it's the easiest sport to win in because of the repetitive nature and the consistency that baseball offers since you have teams playing three and four game series, since you can count on rotations and the pitchers coming up every four to five days. That's what makes baseball betting so easy. Now, of course, there's a lot of research, a lot of work, a lot of tracking that goes into it that you don't want to do, but that's what I do. It's my job, and I love it. Uh, before I get to your complimentary plays today, uh, let me also point out that the guy that's red hot, by the way, uh, is Gus Augustine. Yesterday, his second uh, 150-dime up the ante release in basketball this season. He cashed in with Connecticut. His first one was Purdue hammering Utah State in the second round. That is now seven straight men's tournament winners. Well, today, he has a third 150 dime release, and this is only the 15th 150 dime release ever in his career since joining the site in basketball. It's on the women's championship game, which goes at 3 o'clock Eastern time. I can't wait to watch that one. Iowa and South Carolina, and it is again available for half price over at demarcosports.com. Um, Jesus, what a nice little roll he is on here. So again, uh, his tournament release is 8 and 1 dance roll. $10 bettors have won $7,950. He, of course, his last women's release on Friday night was 100 dime, his usual max wager play, cashing in with Connecticut, getting the cover against Iowa. And today he's got a play that's even stronger. And again, it's available for half price over at demarcosports.com. So let's get to your free plays today. Um, one thing I just want to, an, an interesting story too, I want to just uh, talk about here briefly. The Marlins are 0-9. Right. So some people would say now is the time to start betting against the Marlins or betting on the Marlins because sooner or later they're going to win a game or you continue betting against them because they have proven to be an absolutely horrific team. I think that those type of wacky theories are the greatest way that you can start losing absolutely big amounts of money. And I will relate a story to you that was the one of the most devastating things that ever happened to me in my gambling career. Uh, the year was 1988, and the first six weeks of the season, I turned a profit. I built a nice little bankroll. And granted, at the time, I was making like, you know, twenty-six, twenty-seven thousand $27,000 a year, which in those years, you know, it wasn't bad money in those terms, right? Six straight weeks, turning a profit. And uh, one of the guys that I was working with, another writer, we'll call him the Voice of Doom. Uh, we always called him the Voice of Doom among the writers that we worked with, uh, because if you said it was black and blue, he'd argue to your death that it was blue and black. He just had this negative aspect about everything. But he was a good guy. We used to gamble together. We used to talk about bets and stuff. He came up with this amazing strategy, Memorial Day weekend, 1988. He said there were these teams 
that were in these losing streaks. And he said, now was the time. And he had six teams, right? He had this collection of six teams. And he said, we should do the double up theory. And his theory was simply bet on these teams because they're sooner or later, they're going to hit a winning streak. Now, I'd won six straight weeks without anybody's advice. And on paper, I thought, well, there was some sense to it. So we started, and we started, you know, $50 wagers. And then we'd escalate. If the team lost, $50 turned into $100. $100 would turn into $150 or $200, and we'd keep going up. Now, Danny the bookie, <laughs> Danny the bookie, who I've talked about before, was a great guy. Danny and I had a wonderful relationship outside of him being a bookie and me being a sports writer, right? We had a good relationship. Well, of these six teams, five of them that week proceeded to lose an additional five games, adding on to their losing streak. Well, Danny, the bookie, says as these teams losing, it's like, Al, what are you doing? You've never started betting $100, $200, $250, $300 wagers in your life with me. Why are you doing this? Well, Danny had a good point because I felt like shooting myself in the head. So after five of these teams hit five-game losing streaks that week, I had to bail out. I just couldn't do it anymore because all the profits I had accumulated during the first six weeks of the season, they were gone. The voice of doom, Steve, he continued for another day. Long story short, the following Monday, because at that time you settled up, you know, the weeks ran Monday through Sunday. The following Monday, my debt was a little over $1,900. Steve's debt was a little over $2,200. He didn't have it to cover it. I'm going and taking an advance on my Visa card to cover his debt and help him out. And of course, I'm going and hitting up my ATM to bail myself out of that debt too. And I had to go into the, uh, uh, shall we say, the sports gambling retirement home for a couple of weeks to uh, get my uh, financial um, uh, resolves, uh, reserves back in order and my house back in order. Just the dumbest thing in the world. So anytime somebody comes along and gives you some ridiculous theory about how you should bet, and I'm looking at the Marlins knowing that, are they going to continue to lose because they suck, or sooner or later are they going to win? And Oakland A's fans and Chicago White Sox fans, I'm looking at you too. Just ignore it. Bet the games on a game-by-game, day-by-day basis, and never project, because that's the easiest way to lose big money in baseball. Been there, done that. Never will do it again. Otherwise, you'll be in the bookie retirement home with me, too. Okay, let's get to a couple of baseball plays here today. I like the Detroit Tigers, plus $1.15 on the run line today. Uh, Jack Flaherty, I read during the offseason that uh, working with some uh, analytical pitching um, camps, he had been able to add uh, a couple of miles on his fastball, and it certainly showed in spring training. And I liked what I saw in the spring, and I liked – what I saw against the White Sox on Sunday from him last week, six innings pitched, four hits, one run, seven Ks, zero walks. If this guy can get back, and he was relatively healthy this year to what he was a few years back with St. Louis, the Tigers got a steal with a one-year contract of $14 million. Now, he faced a weak hitting team with the White Sox. He's facing another one today with the A's. I know the Tigers have not exactly been hitting the ball, but the fact is they're still a far superior team than the Oakland A's. And Joe Boyle, who's pitching for Oakland, he had a brief cup of coffee last year with three starts for the A's, and he posted some decent numbers. But do not be deceived. This guy is a guy who has struggled with his control throughout his minor league career. And at 6'7", I can see why. And in his home debut last week against Boston on Monday, listen to this line score. 2.2 innings, 8 hits, 8 runs, 4 walks, 4 Ks. There's a reason the A's are 2-7. and seven. They suck. So I'm willing to take the Tigers plus $1.15 on the run line in this spot. Uh, another run line release I like, and this one I like more than the Tigers, the Yankees plus $1.30 on the run line today at home against the Toronto Blue Jays. A Blue Jays team that's hitting sub-200 as a team right now. Uh, the Yankees going with Luis Gill. This is a guy who looked like he had a promising future before he had a Tommy John surgery. I think it was May of 2022. 
Uh, spring training, he locked down the number five spot in the rotation when uh, Cole had to go on the injured list himself. Uh, had a pretty nice debut against Arizona, red-hot Arizona team, I should point out, uh, last week uh, when the uh, Diamondbacks were playing in Phoenix. 4.2 innings, one hit, one run, six Ks. Uh, the fastball was averaging or hitting a couple of clocks at 100 miles per hour. Um, not bad, you know? And I look here, the Yankees, after losing Friday's opener 3-0, came back yesterday, won 9-8. And the Blue Jays are going with a guy who, I have to be honest with you, I never heard of the guy before researching him today, Bowden Francis. Yeah, that name rolls off your tongue too, doesn't it? He's a guy who was impressive last year in a relief role, but because of injuries in the rotation, they had to put him in a starter's role here as the number five guy. Uh, made his first career start against Houston Monday, and you know how the Astros have been uh, struggling. Gave up three homers among the seven or ten hits he allowed in five-plus innings, seven runs in all. The Yankees have power up and down that lineup, so I like the Yankees. Of the two freebies, I like the Yankees more. But again, as I always say, I live on the run line because with run line plays, you have the chance to maximize your earnings potential. And when you will lose because you will lose in baseball, you minimize your potential damages by living on the run line. In the NBA, listen, I would have been all over the Dallas Mavericks today, minus eight against Houston, but with the fact that Luka may or may not play, I can't back the Mavericks, who are on a 9-1, 13-2 roll against a Rockets team who lost to Dallas last week at home, which snapped their 11-game winning streak, and have since that loss to the Mavericks lost three additional games, and in that four-game losing streak, their defense has collapsed. They've given up 122 points a game, and they've averaged only 107. But again, with Luka questionable, and remember, in that win against uh, the Rockets, all he did was have 47 points, hitting 18 of 30. Ugh, you know, how can I play him today? And questionable, he might not play although I think the Mavericks will play him today. But he, listen, he didn't play in the uh, home win against Golden State on Friday, and that was a big game. And it was a revenge game to boot, a game that the uh, Mavericks won 108-106. to So I think he'll play today because I'm wondering if they held him out as load management on Friday after they beat the Atlanta Hawks 103-95 the night prior. Big game. You know when Mavs... Uh, vying for that spot, uh, moving up and solidifying their uh, standings in the Western Conference playoff race. But again, if I knew he was playing, I would take down. So that would say, some would say, well, would you be better off taking Houston as the eight-point dog? Not with the way the Rockets are playing. They suck right now. And unless you know some inside information, which doesn't really exist in gambling, that I don't know, how can you play the game? Anyway, that'll do it. Wish you well, guys, and talk to you again soon.